Derek, maybe a little different approach than what people might have predicted you were going to use to win this fight, given that Ovi's the one coming in with three straight knockouts and, and you were the wrestler. Um, was that something you had confidence you'd be able to just be aggressive from the outset? Uh, like I guess I work really hard, you know, so uh, every fight I look to come and be aggressive, you know, but I like to think of myself as a smart guy, I use my head, you know. Uh, I saw some openings, I pressed him against the cage, uh, I went towards his legs, this, you know, feel this pressure that he'd give me towards his takedown, he didn't give me much, I came back, he actually gave me a heavy little sprawl, so I came up with some punches, you know, I saw some openings, I can go over the top, underneath, and you know, I caught him with some punches there, and uh, he's really worried about me punching out a clinch, so that's when I saw a uh, time to disengage and throw it straight, I caught him with that, and you know, I had him a little wobble, so we just followed up with some punches after that. I mean, there was a point where it almost seemed like you were, I don't know if reckless is the right word, but you were in, in like, full-on pursuit mode against him. Was there any concern maybe he might catch you with the counter? No, uh, but like I said, uh, I watched a lot of film, and I know he likes to counter, and every time that he was countering, I was ducking under his punches. I knew they were coming. I knew I had to change my levels, be ready to slip and see him, you know, and they were more of like defensive punches, you know. I had a, I had his back against the cage, so he couldn't create that much power from there. Um, he's normally dangerous in the, in the open, you know, in the middle of the cage where he can slip his head off and, you know, get some big winding punches, but like I said, I had him press up against the cage, so a lot of those punches was defensive and uh, I just saw openings and I just stormed, you know? What did, what did you think about the stoppage? Like, obviously, you, you, you're not going to give the win back, but did you think you're going to have to land, you know, maybe four or five more blows before Mario Yamasaki stopped it? No, that was a good stoppage, you know? Uh, th that's MMA now. If I get tagged, that's how the fight is going to go. They're going to stop the fight, you know? He went limp whenever I hit him and, you know, the only thing left from, from there was unloading more punches, you know? Uh, there's no need for him to take that, that damage, you know. I hit him a couple times and he was just limp, you know. Um, obviously, a little bit more target on the punches. I would have just, you know, knocked him straight out. But um, good stoppage. I just got the better on at, at that point in time. And, yeah, it was good stoppage. What did uh, Sam say to you? Oh, nothing. I mean, he's a good guy. He's, he got that serial kill, killer type uh, model. You don't know. I, didn't, I really didn't know how to approach this guy. He's actually probably one of the more scary or dangerous guys to prepare for because it seems like he's never going to be phased. Other guys might, you know, even the top guys might be phased or, you know, really think too much of the fight. It's like, he's kind of like me. I'm like family oriented. He's family oriented. I think he has his kids here. So, I mean, the guy has a lot of experience. He's 26 and six, you know, three knockouts in a row. I mean, he has all the momentum. In a row. I saw him on, it was, it was creepy because I saw him on Twitter all week long, fight week saying, you know, uh, I'm going to get the fight done. You know, I'm like, damn, do he know something? I don't know. You know, I mean, I know he's a tough guy, but he just seems so confident, you know? So, uh, I just wanted to go in there and, you know, um, just do what I've been training and not have any letdowns, you know? Well, it looked like the hands really started to get going, you know, you know, pretty quickly. But it also looked like the strategy was to go in and kind of keep them pressed against the wall. Was it, do you ever get that urge that, hey, me, I'm, I'm really kind of connected right now. Can I step back and maybe let's just trade some punches for a while? Or is it, you know, let's just stay on the game plan and just kind of keep pressing them? You know what? Um... The game plan wasn't to press him against the cage. I saw in a previous fight where he fought uh, Dylan, his f second UFC fight, the guy did press him against the cage, but I threw a couple feints out there, and he backed up, and he was in the red, he was near the cage, you know, so I kind of closed the gap, and the only thing left to do was to press him against the cage. So, you know, it was kind of there. It wasn't a game plan. I just kind of, like, go with the flow, you know. Like I said, I work hard, and when I did press him against the cage, he was like, mm, mm. he was spending a lot of energy, and I'm like, wow. I was breathing, and I was like, man, you know, and I heard my corner yell out three minutes and 30 seconds in, and I'm like, really? I, I feel like, you know, 30 seconds in, my cardio felt really good. So that's when I felt the need to press because I felt him breathing really heavy, and I was, you know, really putting a lot of pressure. He was using a lot of energy to get off the cage. So When it definitely looked like when you were in there and you got the clinch, I mean, the connections that you made, you were able to, to slip up under it and slip around. Was that something that you really focused on, thinking that he was going to take it into the clinch? No, I never. Uh, funny enough, I don't even work uh, clinch work that much. I, you know, I need to get back to that. Uh, me and Coach Greg, we worked a lot of, you know, playing with the guys' hands from the open stands and, um, you know, coming in. You know, but I don't. I don't work a lot. My thing is to stay off the cage. Like uh, I'm a wrestler by trade, but I want to just, you know, clean guys up, get them out of there, knock them out with the hands or the feet. You know, in the middle of the cage. Um, the plan is never, you know, like I said, he kind of, when I fainted him, he backed up towards the cage. So it was there, so I took it, you know. I'm an opportunist, and I just work hard and try to be good in every position.
Well, did it go exactly as you thought? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times guys will watch the fight or they'll think about it a little bit like, oh, that went good, but I probably could have did this a little bit better. When you think about it now that you've had a, a few minutes to kind of look at it, was there anything that you're like, oh, that maybe didn't work as well, or are you completely happy with your the, the performance out there? Uh, I'm completely happy with the win and the finish. Uh, I'll probably look at the film and be like, dang, I was a little more reckless than I need to be. You know, maybe I could keep my hands up. I'm sure I was, you know, punching. Maybe my, one of my hands was down. But, you know, I had them stunt pretty good. So uh, sometimes you can charge in, but you got to be caught because the other guy is still, you know, live and they can, you know, hit you with a counterpunch. So, well, with an impressive win like that, is there anybody else maybe next that uh, now is uh, on your radar? Oh, uh, my 15th in the rankings. I'm gonna sit back and talk to my coaches. Uh, I'm just gonna keep climbing that ladder, you know. Um, I'm not really taking the Conor McGregor approach, you know. I'm gonna take the Ronda approach, I guess, and just beat beat everybody, you know, as they come. I'm just gonna beat them down, you know. I'm gonna work really hard, and uh, that's it.